over. Yeah. We need to have a burning of the uh, statement. <laughs> oh my. We need to have what now, hon? A, a burning. A burning of the statement. Of the COVID yes. statement. Ceremony. Someday. Someday. I'm counting on it. <laughs> All right, so we've got here, let's see, we've got Barbara. Um, Cheryl, some years ago, we lost Carol Herrick because she was chair. And I guess she decided not ever to come back again. <laughs> Anybody know how she's doing? Slowly, as last I heard. Yeah, so she got some, she had a bad fall, Mike. She had a bad fall and had some Ooh, leg issues and um, arm issues. It's hard for her to do much of anything. Shoulder and knee. Hmm. Kind of sounds like that song. Knee bones connected to the thigh yes. bone. Carol broke it. Thigh bones connected to the hip bone. Carol broke, you know, kind of sounds like that. <laughs> And you know how well I sing, Esther. Too. I do. What's and that? It made me think of that song, Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes. Right. Oh, right. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Kindergarten. I love that. I think I still do. It's too far back. <laughs> too far back. Yeah. I can't. I just sung that um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Only not head, shoulders, knees, and toes. It's head, thorax, abdomen. Oh. Abdomen. Are you working on your grasshopper parts? Is that what you're working on? Insects, six legs, antenna, you know, eyes and mouth, antenna too. Wait, six where legs were you, and where were you doing this? Where were you doing insect. this? <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> oh, your insects? Oh, she interrupts at Huntley. So I knew she was over at Huntley, but I didn't know where it was that big into insects. Well, I've, I've got the, the best. Maybe you've already seen it on Facebook, Cheryl. I've got the best Bernie meme with his picture all snow jacket, snow jacket, snow jacket, snow jacket, snow jacket, snow jacket, snow jacket on top of a leaf with his head at the top. And he looks like a caterpillar. It's very funny. <laughs> oh, there's Jordan. Jordan's here. Those have been a lot of fun. They really have been. They really have been hilarious. Okay, so is this everybody? It got very personal for me when uh, somebody took the picture of the Leonberger with a, uh, a chihuahua on its back, took the chihuahua out and put um, Bernie on top of the Leonberger. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's, that's yeah, very funny. That's, that's when it got personal and I got annoyed. Okay. Are you still annoyed or you're over it now? Oh, no, I was over it in five minutes. Yay, Michael. That's emotional control. Okay, so here, who else do we have? This is all the participants. Or do I have? I've got Denise, Barbara, Cheryl. I want to make sure I've got everybody down. I think we're good. So we got nine. This is nice. All right, ready to start, guys? Sure. Read away. Okay, now let's, can I ask you all to mute if you're not... Mm -hmm. Talking. Okay, and um, Esther, you're, for tonight, you're gonna you're gonna be the gavel girl. Oh, I gotta hand the gavel over. I better give it to you, Esther. Okay. Well, we're a partner partnership. Remember, we do TV shows together and stuff. That's right. So we can do a gavel. <laughs> yes, we can. Okay, so we ready to go here? The Fairfax County History Commission has conducted a wholly electronic meeting on today. Uh, January 27th. Um, oops, wait a minute. Let's see. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance, this board needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. First, because each member of the board or of this commission uh, committee is participating in this meeting from a separate location. We must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all of the other members. Accordingly, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each uh, member participating in this meeting to state your name, 
and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention and ensure you can hear all of your colleagues. Following this role, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. All right, so I'm uh, Lynn Garvey Hodge and I'm calling in from the Springfield district. All right, uh, Denise, you, you still have to talk, right? Uh oh, did we lose Denise? No, I'm here. Um, no, I'm oh. not. A, I'm not officially part of the um, committee. The committee? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just didn't want to leave you out. Thank you very right. much. You're welcome. Um, Barbara Nave. Barbara Nave here in Reston. Okay. Cheryl. Did we lose Cheryl? I, I am here from in Centerville. Okay. Liz. Liz Kroll in Alexandria. Nice. Esther. Esther McCullough in Herndon. Okay. Jordan. Jordan Tannenbaum in Fairfax. All right. Michael. Michael Irwin in Fairfax. Okay. And Phyllis. Phyllis Walker Ford, Clifton. Oh, you know, I should have been writing all this down. <laughs> Um, but I'll go back and just use those other minutes. Now, just as a FYI, some of you may not know this. Um, I'll pick up with the rest of roll call here in a minute. But Mary Lipsy has dropped back off of our committee right now because she's feeling pretty overwhelmed. So while she's been with us before, she's she's gonna be absent for for the moment. Okay. Um, so in terms of the audibility, I need to make a motion that our history conference committee uh, has been satisfied that each member's yes. voice. I didn't say anything. Oh gosh, thank you. You're right. Okay, thank you, gavel girl. Keep me on, on point here. All right, so Esther, I'm gonna pass the gavel to you so that I can make a voice vote, okay? So now um, the History Commission's History Conference Committee is satisfied that each member's voice can be adequately heard by each member. Is that, that that's my motion? Anybody second? Second. Okay, wonderful. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Okay, outstanding. All right. Um, so that passed unanimously. Uh, let's see, we've done that. So the state of an emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic has made it unsafe for this board to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of this board and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. Um, I further move this board may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated phone line and the public may access this meeting by. Um, Denise, is this the same number? for our history conference? Yes. It's or our history commission, rather? Uh, yeah, the history commission, yes. Okay, perfect. So the call in number is 844-621-3956. And this event. For a second. Well, there's an event number. Does the event number stay the same, Denise? The event number changes. If you give me just a minute, I can tell you what the event number is for this meeting. Okie dokie. Thank you so much. No problem. It is 179-710-5248. Okay. Um, is there a second? Second. Yes. All right. Thank you. And then who did that, Jordan or Mike? I did. Jordan. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposes? Okay. Motion carried. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, now you get to give me the gavel back here, Esther. All right. Um, I guess that's you it. Have another motion. I thought I did, but it's not in the minutes from 
the ones I'm, I'm going from are the 13th. So I need to have a Denise, okay, you know my third motion is because you're right. Yes, so there's three motions usually. Um, Page three. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought I already, I just did that. Let me do, hang on a second. I want to keep track of myself. The I have that all the matters addressed on today's agenda must address the state of emergency itself and are necessary for continuity. Did I did we not just do that one? And are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations in the discharge of this board's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. I don't think we did that one. Like did that's right. We did so you a second similar. Yes. Okay. So Mike, so Mike, you made a, a motion on that one. That's Mike's a guest. Uh, oh, and he. I think he's kind of like a citizen at large, like Janelle. Okay. I don't know, but we, we could, uh, Denise could clarify that for us. I actually don't know whether um, members of the public can be part of uh, mm -hmm. history commission committees. I don't know if you have a standing policy. It's not, I do not believe it's addressed in the bylaws. Okay, well, there is a precedent that's been set that we used to have another committee person named Janae Lindner who sat with us for good Lord, at least three years. So if we lean into that precedent, it would be just fine for Michael to okay, be. Okay, so Mike second, all yeah. those in favor. Okay. Uh, Aye. Those opposed? Motion Thank carries. You. Now, who was the first on that one, Esther? Who, who seconded or who made that motion before Mike? Was it Jordan? You made the motion. And you did. No, you, you made the motion, Len. I did. Okay. <laughs> and who second? Michael. Mike. Mike. Okay. okay. That's so right. Because I get the gavel motion. back. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's see. Anything else here? I think that's it. Denise, did I leave anything out, sweetie? Are we good to go here? I think you're good to go. All right, thank you. It's not often that I'm good to go, so this is wonderful. Um, all right, they basically had four things to make sure we go over tonight. And the, the first one, of course, is going to be uh, a sense of uh, un unanimity about the theme for the conference. You've seen uh an email from me that we stay with the theme from uh, the discussion at the december 8th board of supervisors meeting about 2021 being the year of the uh, history of african americans in fairfax county did i get that right barbara did i get that what i just said correct and then first brought up at the luckily for the it was, for, it was first it was first presented uh by the c and c to the history commission and the history commission approved this as our major initiative for 2021 we okay. we included it in the report the oh, inventory yeah. because okay. we right. wanted to advise them but the significance is that the history commission has agreed to that Okay. So when we get to the theme, I, I, since I wasn't yet back on the committee, I didn't see your original, your email or what you said. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, okay. When it's time, I have a suggestion about the theme. Yeah. I do. Just wait. I do too. I do too. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Should I go? Um, I just wanted to make sure that what I had said, Barbara, was accurate. And you're right, because by the 8th of December, we probably would have already had we did commission we, meeting we right. in the in the past minutes we did it in um uh, november i think november i have to look i'll have to look at the minutes to see okay. exactly when or how i phrased it but that's when that's when we did it okay all right I just didn't know when we went public with it and i guess minutes are public but still yes they are okay so i've heard some interesting commentaries here that you'd like to provide some input. Barbara, let's hear some of your thoughts. And then Jordan, you said you've had some too. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, okay. Here's, here's my thought. Um, and it's coming at it from a little different angle. And that okay. is, um, in, I've had, we've had conversations, I've had conversations with various people and this doesn't just <laughs> this year. And that is that sure. if our, if our, one of our goals 
is to manage to incorporate African American history in Fairfax County into the whole, the entire county history. All right, so we we aren't it's not just that it's it's they are part of the main story. Sure. sure. What do you think? I don't know what the theme would be. We have to talk about that, but my idea was that we would have a theme that would incorporate incorporate the stories of the African Americans on that theme as well as other things as well. So we did the our whole conference uh, in in 2019 on African Americans here. It was wonderful. No, only the afternoon. Only the but, afternoon. But the idea would be that we wouldn't we wouldn't just be African American. It would be Fairfax County history, and it would involve whatever our net, our theme is, whether it's grocery stores or I'm using that just you know, but include the African American stories as part of a larger story that's the entire county. So I'm not sure well, that I'm stating it clearly, but but that's blend, what I thought. Blend the county history with the African American. Pardon me? Yeah. Blend the history. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for the verb, Esther. So that so that it's we are we are taking the step to say this is part, they are part of our we're all together here and we're not gonna just focus on that. We are incorporated them into our whole big story. So that was my point. I don't know what yours is, Jordan. But anyway, yeah, well, it, it actually it actually is similar, only more direct. Okay. That, is, that I do think in reflecting on the past history conferences that we have included, uh, uh, we have focused on African American history a lot. There are other groups, and I think this is where you were headed, that we have not actually, we have neither uh, focused on nor are they represented on our commission, which That's is right. a larger concern that I have. A and those would be Asian, the yes. Asian community, and the Hispanic community. Yeah. Well, and you can further, you can cut the Asian in, you know, it, which is yeah. such an interesting thing is that you go over um, like near, near uh, Annandale Road, that whole section, that's Korean. Right. Then you go to other areas like in Falls Church and there's a whole Vietnamese group. So um, the diversity, even if we focused on the diversity and pulled all these different groups. Yeah. In. So yeah. I, I understand what you're saying anyway. I would support that if we could come up with something. Okay, yeah. so let me make sure I'm understanding what y'all are saying. That rather than a singular focus, sort of a more blended diversity focus. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Okay. Because, and, and this may not be for this year. One of the things that I have always wanted to explore in this county is the evolution of the different religions in this county. So I'm not saying this has to be this year. I'm just kind of putting that out there so we might consider it at some point in time. Um, and, and for instance, Jordan, I'd love to know really, you know, when the first, and do you know when the first temple was built here in Fairfax County? For instance. Uh, mm -hmm, good question. Probably. Probably uh, Alexandria, right? Oh. Well, Alexandria would be in L. Yes, Alexandria, Bethel. The, that temple, I think, goes back to the turn of the century, I believe, like nineteen twenty, maybe nineteen seventeen, something the like that. Seminary, the one on seminary. No, that one was probably from the fifties. My guess is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That there sounds was like a whole conference theme in itself. I think yeah. so. I think that would be very broad. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so set that aside. We don't need to. If, if you look at, at one aspect of the diversity, it's after the Korean War when you had the Koreans come. The after the Vietnamese War, you had the Vietnamese, you had the Laotian, and out here we had, you know, whole settlements. Um, the Laotian boat people, all of that came after that war. And then Latinos came um, primarily, at least out in my part of the county, uh, when all the great development and they were, um, they came in as to work. So, in other words, there's they're almost like waves of them, and now we're all all diverse. So, okay, yeah. a very diverse county, very diverse county. Okay, so we've only heard from uh, our white brothers and sisters. I want to hear from Esther and Phyllis. Tell me what some of your thoughts are here. What do you think? Phyllis? Either one of you. Okay. 
I like the idea of, of the diversity. Um, I don't think, I think originally, Lynn, when you mentioned um, in the, what you sent to us, you were talking about a whole day of African American history, and I don't, I don't think that would work for okay. our audience. Um, so, so I'm, I kind of go along with what both Jordan and um, Barbara are saying. Okay. Okay. I, th I think we might have to define it a little smaller. With yeah, because it's huge. But I mean, diversity it's... is a is is a big thing across the not only the county but all around the state. Sure. Um, so I think that's a good a good topic for this year. Okay. But if we did a starting point and did a certain segment and then picked it up from there at the next conference. Oh, so we had like a series of conferences that are connected. Right. On I like the that. diversity okay. of Fairfax County. Okay. Because you will have the African American in the beginning. Sure. I think that's fantastic. Because along the way, people will say, well, you know, what about this group? What about that group? And one of the groups that, that we don't talk often about that was actually very present even in the 1940s and 50s in Fairfax County were Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And they got pretty much completely pushed out. So mm -hmm. um, that was long before the Trail of Tears. But anyway, that, that's okay. All right, so keep so so keep brainstorming here for a while, guys. Something like a timeline. Oh, okay. Oh, a use like a chronology timeline. Yes. Kind of yes. All right. And Reston, we also have like very right behind me. Uh, we have um, Somalians. We have mm -hmm. quite a few, you know, clusters, and I'm sure there are other places in the county too. So these are also. Africans <clears throat> as well as well and Reston didn't come when was Reston actually founded was it the beginning of the 60s or the end of the 50s 1964 64 okay after the 1964 civil rights act right no before it, they, it was decided before the civil rights was passed as far as being open housing that was our that was I mean Simon's point yeah. earlier that was the official opening yeah okay, okay. And he was big on diversity. Big time. That's absolutely. Yes. We had to, yes, we had to fight in order to have the real estate people mm -hmm. uh, show homes to African Americans. They wouldn't do it. So we kind of rest and took it on themselves. But anyway, I think the diversity, if we did that as our general theme, we could maybe focus, but have that as the, as the theme and then Sure, Break sure. Up into different groups. So that's the bubble. So the bubble is diversity. Mm -hmm. And then Esther's uh, suggesting timeline. So early on timeline is going to be obviously that was going to include Native Americans. It's going to include African Americans. It's then going to include the, the Europeans. So I don't know how long, how long a window of time do you want to go? Because if we go back you know, 400 plus years ago. Well, I think you could you could even do it in 20th century. That's still last century. That's true. Because you're, what we're talking about, a lot of this came, excuse me, came um, from mid-century on and how it's affected all kinds of aspects of our society. Mid 20th century? Mm -hmm. Well, you have the African American in the late 1800s. I know, but I'm saying we, if we're looking at, if we're not just doing from the big, yes, that's right. But if we're looking at diversity, churches. we can take a picture yeah. of 20th century. We would, we would let people know that's history now. Well, I, I think we have to go back past the 20th century i agree if if we're gonna we'd have to have like the 1850s 18 something yeah, yeah. sure you could you could do 
you yeah. could do uh when it when it was pre when antebellum you had the northern people moving in you had the quakers moving in i mean you had this, this is a yeah. I, I think it's it's going to be too massive if we try to include going back that far. I do like the idea of the of the 20th century. I do also think that w this would I think focusing on groups that we haven't before. Yes. Uh, will also expand our audience, and I think that that would be exactly. good as well. So you know the um, there's no question that um, you look at Manassas today, highly Hispanic. I mean, you've got absolutely. Yeah. So I think I think that community. The Asians, as as Barbara said, in a variety of, from a variety of different countries. Sure. Uh, you look in Annandale, that's very Asian, uh, and I think that well, Asian and Mid Eastern now too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many, but I do think. Look, the, the Native Americans. Unfortunately, there are no Native Americans and haven't been. We genocide them. So well, they, they got pushed out. They, they, they were here in the fifties. They were here in the fifties. 1950s what? you have you have six tribes six i think six tribes that have federal recognition in, Ver in, in virginia but i but, but they not, are not in fairfax county right not in fairfax county um and again i i, I do think that uh, we can't there are lots of different groups and if we go back to the 17s and 1800s then i i think it's maybe we may be biting off more than we can chew i do think better to focus in on, on mid-century or 20th century and let's let's look at the groups there. Let's focus in on that. It would still be diverse because we're not focusing yeah. on one group um, or a number of groups. But but I do think that that would be that would be what we should. How we should George, think I disagree. Okay. I agree with the diversity. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally with that. But that's why I said continue it into the next history conference. Yeah, because we, the African American has great history there in the late 1800s. Yes, and yes. we have proof. We have churches that are still going. Right, that were established as early as what was Bethel uh, Phyllis? Was that 18? Uh, most of them started with 1860. Yeah, see, that's Clifton. That would be Clifton Primitive. Yeah. Well, we're 1867. There's somebody before us. I think it's Bethel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you if you look at 1860 forward, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of a lot of the historical African American churches. Right. Uh, you've got landowners that African American landowners in 1860. Right. They were so farmers. Okay. They were right. they were yeah. merchants. Sure. So we'd yeah. lose a lot if we started with 19th century. So and this is, I'm thinking, um, this is kind of a blend of everything I'm hearing here, guys. The one focus, and, and, and I don't want to get too focused on this because I love this diversity theme, but I agree the late 19th century is worth reviewing, maybe from a reconstruction perspective. We have never really done anything on reconstruction. And pull it out. I mean, my God, how much have we done on the Civil War? Okay, so we're done with that. <laughs> we're really not, but do you know what I mean? We've we've done quite a bit of conference time on this. I mean, the whole sesquicentennial piece was was at least four or five years of conference content. But we've not quite done the um reconstruction and that then leading into the beginning of the 20th century, which was pretty colorful. We had a lot of immigrants coming into this area as as uh that, that whole picture unfolded and so maybe we take it from you know this is a little different than what you were saying phyllis but maybe just post civil war up to i don't know world war world war ii do you want to do a time no, no if if you want to incorporate the the asians then you go after the korean war and oh, absolutely. But don't forget, we're talking about doing a series here. So I think maybe this is the year we don't we don't do Asians. I don't know if we stay with a the timeline theme. We have to stay with the timeline. Theme. Well, then we're right back to doing and there's nothing yeah. against African Americans. And I realize they've been here and have an incredible history. But what I'm trying to do is to incorporate that as part of a larger picture. So if we're going to do multi years, then then we're not doing what 
you know, we're moving away from the idea of, of diversity. I think some people would be amazed to see the demographics of the county now. And so the 20th century is an interesting time. It, the fact that we don't talk about the African Americans in their churches in the 1800s doesn't mean we're ignoring it. It just means that's not part of this story. And it doesn't, so that's where I come well, from. Well, you so, know, have a story gonna, in place, if, Bob. Yeah, if we're going to do a timeline. Well, are we doing a timeline? I mean, that's what I. Yes. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't understand I don't know why we're doing a timeline. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree we need that. an anchor. We need an anchor here because otherwise we could just talk about the Vietnamese. And what does that mean? No, we're talking yeah. about yeah. the different That's communities. And when you talk about the individual community, whoever's talking about the African American community would say this is the longest. You know, this community has roots here. The Koreans have roots here. Um, so it would be part of the presentation. And that's chronology. I, but I think what I'm I'm hearing is if we do a series, then, you know, we don't want that very first conference to be the the crazy quilt of all the different diversities. Well, that's what I want. I don't know what Jordan said. Uh, I know, I'm not, that's what I would. I would. I think uh, if you want to do diversity then you would have sections, you would have uh, different groups being highlighted at different times in one conference. Right. That's what I would do. Look, diversity well, a is- A lot, that's a lot for five hours. It's all right. I think you could, uh, well, what we could look at the groups, you know, we've already uh, rattled off. You've got about five groups, I think, that you would focus on. Asia. I mean, I think Asians, um, it, uh, Barbara's right. There's a huge difference in where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Sure. And when they came here. Yeah, but, but here. I think you still could do a session on that. You could, uh, I, and my, my uh, problem, I don't know as much about the early origins of these communities in Fairfax County, but we would learn about that. We can study that. But I think if you just focus on each conference on a different group, um, if I were, if that's the way they want, you wanted to go, then I would not start with the- Oh, no, no, no. I don't see it. It's not what Phyllis said. One group. So, no, we're not just focusing on one group. That's not what Phyllis said. That's not what Esther said. So I think there's got to be a way to um, quilt this together. I'll just stay with that metaphor for a minute. So how well, can, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Sure. Go, oh, Cheryl. Yeah, thank you. For being here. Um, what, about what about starting with the civil rights movement and how it created room for diversity? And then you can look at, you know, not necessarily groups, but these events that create new, that restructure and re, um, redefine our community over time. So there's the Vietnam War, the Korean, you know, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, um, you know, World War One, and so that you have, uh, you have a sort of chron chronological structuring in which you then would address these um, ethnic diversities. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I think, I mean, just it's almost incumbent on us as, as historians to have some kind of a palette, if you will, that makes sense so that it's not just three different groups. Um, yeah. it's, it's more of a mix. I don't know. So what is it? Phyllis and Esther, what do you guys think about that? I think having a chronological sense to it goes along with my timeline idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the beginning that we're beginning to fuss about now. Uh, but you're going to miss a lot if you start where you're talking about. Because, for instance, there was a landowner, a dairy farmer, who was African-American in this county that sold land to Dulles Airport. Right very significant uh, things like that, that will never come out if we start 1900s. Or the 60s, or the 60s in the civil rights. Right. Yeah, 1950s, you know, if 19 He's selling land to Dulles, that's 20th century. And that's, if you look at it 20th century, then you're looking at the, the African-American communities that were established. And that's one of them. There were there were strong ones out out in the western 
course, and Cheryl knows about that. Yes, and I know about them all. So I, I was trying to finish, Esther, that you also obviously are very much involved and aware of that. And so in telling the story from mid 20th century, you would be incorporating though that part of the African-American story. They wouldn't be ignored or denied. They just would be part of a larger whole. And this is what they were doing. I think, you know, I think all things considered, everything we've been through this last year, I'm thinking right now, 2020, 2021, the African-American energy in this country right now is strong. And I think if we jump in too far ahead in the 20th century, we're going to miss out on a lot of rich um, information, uh, a better learning of some of how we even got to where we are. Um, and I, I'm, I'm about two thirds of the way through Ken Follett's Edge of Eternity. I don't know if any of you guys have read that or not. It's the third of his book on the on the 20th century. And um, it it best makes sense if you've read the other three books, which would be similar to how, like if we did a, a conference series, how that all would flow out. And, and you know, everybody gets covered in, in one way or another, um, but he just doesn't try to do from, you know, the 1960s forward. Uh, in, in fact, his third book doesn't even really get into the civil rights piece until uh, I, I mean, I've just I've just finished the part where uh, Kennedy was assassinated. And I'm two thirds of the way through the book. But and, and anyway, OK, I've who, who have we not heard from here? We haven't heard from Mike. Um, Mike, what are you some of your thoughts here? Mike, are you here? I think at the moment I'm going to reserve uh, reserve commentary because I'm still I'm still mulling over the different uh, suggestions that have been made. There's been a lot. And I'm I'm sorry. There's been a lot of different suggestions. Yes. Exactly, and I'm trying to trying to. What's the best way to say it? Um, Process. I keep pros and cons to everything. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the problem. This is gonna this is gonna take a lot more than just one one two hour discussion. I'm afraid to really really hash this out. Yeah, and lay out lay out a plan. But I really see something this big being multiple history conferences over yes. two, three, or even four years. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I agree and too. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, this is this is a big task we're laying out for ourselves. I think it's a I think it's a noteworthy and and uh, uh, necessary task. But we've got to plan this carefully. Yeah, uh, we've really got to plan this carefully. Yeah, and to be quite honest with you, I think it's going to be harder than hell to really do it over these damn Zoom meetings. Yeah, that's um, on my that's on our agenda too tonight. So, yeah. yeah. Um, let me, I haven't, we haven't heard yet from Liz and Michael, I, I share some of your need to process and evaluate what all we've, we've heard here. So I'm not, I'm not surprised at that. Liz, what, yeah, what was, uh, I'm sorry. Time processing. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I'm, 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 I'm walking there with you. Liz, what about you? What do you say? Well, I agree with what Mike says and that I think this will have to be addressed over multi years. Right. Initially, I was thinking, you know, one of two approaches. There were, you know, starting, you know, thinking in terms of Gum Springs and some of the other African American communities. There were vibrant and viable African American communities within the county, um, uh, some of which there's a pretty, you know, rich history of. Um, and I was thinking possibly looking at some of those. The other thing I was thinking of if um, we wanted to take a different approach was to come up with a theme. Well, you know, whatever the theme might be, 
and then um, look at different uh, groups or entities and see how they reacted to a specific theme. So um, I can't, I, I'm not coming up with a good example, but something that, that would kind of cross over a lot of different um, different groups. I mean, even if it was something as, you know, like immigration or, sure. um, you know, but just something or, um, you know, kind of being or something like that. Yeah. What or, did you say, Sarah? What did you say? What did you? She was she was suggesting like work or entrepreneurship. Those oh, I see. Okay. You could then plug in. I see. Um, so that the theme would unify and connect the different parts. Sure. Sure. Right. sure. So no, you see just, building or whatever. I mean, but I think that there, you know, potentially there might be something that would, you know, be overarching for a lot of different groups or communities. But initially, like I said, I have been thinking of like, you know, the different um, African American communities within the county, because certainly there are people who have a lot of expertise on that. Sure. Sure. Liz, I like I like the immigrant um, focus and like a county of immigrants might be a theme if you were going to look at that. I really I, I do that I like that a lot. Um, because um, that would be and that is something that is um, contemporary. It's in the news quite a bit. These immigration immigrants. Um, I think it's topical. Um, keep in mind as in addition to um, the Black Lives Matter issue, which is which is uh, has been paramount certainly in the last year. You just had the president sign a document um, uh, about Chinese, about Asians, and uh, yeah. you know, and hate hate group hate that's developed against Asians, the China virus, and all that other kind of crap. Sure, sure. So I, I honestly, I, I do think I, as I've thought about this that it is. An opportunity to to focus on other groups that we haven't focused on before. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're all in agreement on that. This is, you know, you guys. I'm a big picture person. I know you're used to that, and that's one of the reasons why I love having you around me because you help me focus. Um, but if we did, let's say, a four conference, four conferences. I've heard three to four mentioned. When we hit that fourth conference out from this year, that will be our twentieth. History conference, and I think that should be a really big deal because that's an institution that's lasted then for twenty years and and, and certainly been a piece of the, 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 the county. So I see somehow stair stepping up to that twentieth conference. It would give us four conferences to really drill down and do this or that or this or that. Um, you know. One of the other areas that we've not talked about at all in terms of our history in Fairfax County, and it isn't there, I don't even know that there is specific history other than legislation, is the reality of how this county and our country has accommodated um, people with physical disabilities. And that whole piece, when did that come about? You know, I mean, that was a rhetorical question, but um, there's so many little uh pie slices that make up this whole amazing diversity of uh that makes up fairfax county today um so anyway i just wanted to put that out there that that gives us automatically at least four years to 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 work from yeah barbara okay um um i i'm i'm echoing um esther and jordan is that if we looked at i'm trying to find a time thing if we did and I'm still locking on the 20th century because it's such an incredible changes from 1900 to, you know, the, the 20th century. Um, and and the, the idea, again, I think four years is fine, but I think for this year, it would be really, um, they're all aspects of uh, the immigrants, for instance, in the parks with when um we ended up with so many um latinos the the issues that have to do with the soccer fields and the way they play all the societal changes because of the different groups and bringing in their cultures um 
the African Americans are still, you know, have centered on their churches. So um, the the Asians would would the Vietnamese would go and fish, and they loved Green Spring Gardens. I'm just using examples of the changes to our culture. Uh, the expansion and all that is part of the diversity. So if we could find a way to to recognize and provide sufficient time for the African American communities, but include the others in this year, I think it would be a very um, I think it would be a, a rich a rich conference. It might be rich, but I think it would be too much in one conference. Yeah. And I, if you call it immigrants, if you put a theme of immigrants on there, I would be insulted. Because there were African Americans who were slaves working to build this county. And yeah. that recognition needs to go. We're talking about learning the history. I agree. There seems to be an emphasis nationwide on learning African American history. Now, what what came out of the uh board because i wasn't there what what was nothing, the nothing. They, we just told them esther we told them because we want this to be ours and we did not we did we wanted them to know that this is what the history commission was doing well you know if, me, esther i'm of all people and very much supporting your position i'm simply looking at the conference and how we can incorporate something in addition to the story of the african americans if you all want to just do that that's fine i'm not i'm not reducing the significance or ignoring it at all i was just approaching it from a different angle that's all well, well you if know, you come I, at it from 20th century and you come at it with the word immigrants that totally erases that I whole agree. subject i agree and if you if you're going to really present the history I don't care. Start talking about the beginning of the county and talk about the Caucasians that were here. That's diversity. Yeah. I mean, that is. And and then back to my thinking on reconstruction, because we, as I said, we have done a lot about the Civil War. That would also include, I mean, do you know how many Irish came to this country? I mean, many of them were here uh, even during the time when the uh, ONA was being built because they were a lot of the folks that, that helped build that um, those railroads. So there are other diversity groups. And, um, you know, the, the Irish Catholic would be one that would have been part of that reconstruction time. Esther, where would you see a good starting point to be to be as inclusive as we can with african american because we have done the 400 years but you know we've got some great people who could present i'd love to have uh judge quander back i uh and um well i'd have to give that some thought okay because uh, like mike said this is a big thing to chew off okay it is and having not been here before 96 i would have to do some research and when i came here there was very little on the african-american to research right right but esther, esther look what what would you how would you feel if you were let's say asian or latin american and here comes the history conference and there has never been any attention paid to those groups jordan I would feel just like I've felt all the other years that we've had conferences. Yeah. But I think the climate now is the African American history being included in the broader history. Right. I agree. And if we include the history of Fairfax from the very beginning and then put the African American in as the slave and then reconstruction then I think that's the starting point. Yeah, it's the story. There's a beginning and an end of the story. Esther, um, I'm, I, I tend to be with you there too. And I, I also think if we're going to turn this into a series, let's turn this into a series. Maybe, maybe, and may, let me make a suggestion tonight because I think uh, we all need to do a lot of processing on this. Mike, thank you for your uh, honesty and putting that out there. 
I'm wondering if it makes sense for each of us to go back and take four sheets of paper and do, you know, end of Civil War to, let's see, so 65, 75, 85, maybe 85, 85, and then cross over to the beginning of the, the 20th century. Um, and then go on it from that. Because really, no matter how you cut it, um, there has been a, 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 a group of people that have been here for a long window of time, and then the immigrants started coming in a, a bit later. I, I do think focusing it only on immigration is a little too, too focused. So we've got four years and a lot of time to be able to, you know, do a whole buffet of content. We don't have to do it all in the very first conference. We have to do it all in the very in the very first two conferences. Okay, so I think Phyllis is trying to say something. Go ahead, Phyllis. I'm struggling with the conversation, and part of it has to do with the webinar that Virginia Africana did right. last Friday. Right. On um, teaching. African American history in the state of Virginia. The, and what and what was discussed as a result of that? Okay, that that seminar that webinar talked about the governor's commission okay. that began almost two years ago. Uh huh. Make that commission was that thirty nine member commission was charged to look at or make recommendations on how African-American history could be included into the classroom. Okay. There are a number of recommendations that have been made. Um, the Board of Education has approved those recommendations. There are two bills working through the Senate and the um, House uh, General Assembly in Richmond. But that doesn't, that's, that's not going to get African American history into the school, the classrooms within the next couple of years. That's, that's something that has to be implemented and actually worked out in the curriculum and then implemented into the classrooms. There's also a new class called um, African American history that is being piloted in 16 school districts in the state of Virginia. Fairfax County is not one of them. This, this class is an elective for high school students. It will be reviewed at the end of, of this school year and looked at for a possible future. So my struggle is, Part of what Esther is saying, we've been here since slavery before, and there's not a lot of African American history that has been put out there in Fairfax County, and that's part of what the, the uh, initiative that we talked about is to collect those things that we know have already been uh, put together, whether they're videos, whether they're all histories, whatever books or stories right um so i i hear what everybody is saying but i i think we've got to really look at how to present it and and if if you're looking at time frames then you've got to go from the very early stage at the beginning and, and come forward but yeah when you when you look at fairfax county fairfax county wasn't as Barbara said, it, it wasn't integrated in, in the rest of the part. Uh, schools weren't integrated in Fairfax County until the, the mid 60s, 1960s. So I think we really seriously have to look at what, what it is we, we can do and how to work these. If we, if we choose to do immigrants, then we're not talking about African Americans. Yeah, I agree. So, so here's an idea following up on Phyllis. I don't know if anyone other than, than um, Phyllis told me about and I attended the program and I was, it was incredible. This is the I second. Attended. 
we're, okay, it was wonderful. It was wonderful, and it just makes me so angry that Fairfax County isn't participating in in this. So, if we just made the conference, I'm going to flip all the way back. If we made the conference, uh, part of it would be the kinds of material that we are collecting. Where we would we'd be back to focusing on African American, but if we looked at the county history and somehow fit it in and from the time that it 1741 when it was really Fairfax County on um then we're then we're taking what Phyllis is doing and, and we're focusing on the initiative and having since this is in November the the presentation of what all the conf what all the history commission has done for so far in 2021 on our initiative and we make it that and then what Jordan's saying, I totally agree with, but if we focus and say, this is what we've accomplished. I mean, we're having the committee. I think, I think Phyllis and Mary have set up a, um, the time for the first committee meeting. Um, and so we're finding all kinds of things already. So it would be interesting because if you do that, Lynn, you talk about reconstruction and, you know, you just have to read Netherton's book and see what happened here. Mm -hmm. with reconstruction and it was not a good thing for the African American communities at all. And we need to know about that. Yeah. That's history. Absolutely. We, we need to know about that. Here's um okay, this is well, I flip that. I would I in supporting Phyllis, I could go either way, but I see what Phyllis is saying and it would be an effort to do your big picture and put it all together as presenting it as our initiative, the History Commission initiative for 2021. In addition to the History Commission initiative, you could also invite the library, what they're doing, and uh, Fairfax County Parks, what they're doing. You could grab and pull in other agencies and what they're doing in terms of collecting untold stories and making them more visible. And although it's not specifically Fairfax County for a Friends of Fairfax Archaeology um, a symposium, we invited uh, folks from Jamestown to come up. There's a woman named Sade Reed who's doing her um, PhD dissertation on uh, the early African Americans uh, who came to Jamestown, and she's phenomenal. And although it's not specifically Fairfax County, it is um, African Ameri Africans arriving in the New World uh, and sure. You know, the, the sort of that early history, but, but uh, she presented a few years ago um, at one of our events and she, she and uh, David Gibbon, who is um, the director of Jamestown did a kind of a, a, a group thing, but it, it kind of, you know, it, it provides a little bit of context. The, you know, the other thing is to look at, you know, freed African American communities, you know. Um, well, I think that's what, what Phyllis doesn't want us to forget is how important that was. Is that, did I say that correctly, Phyllis? Did I acknowledge that in, in the way that you were trying to say? Did I that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you see here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So, you know how when you read a really big book, there's always a preface. There's kind of an overview. And then there's the drill down and the drill down and the drill down and then the summary kind of at the end. All right, just go with me on this for a minute. I wonder if, and, and this would kind of take care of all the topics we've talked about tonight on some level. If we made this first conference to be the quick sketch of the next four years, we could cover some African American history. We could cover a little bit on immigration. We could cover a little bit on civil rights, and then use the next three years to drill down and you know get uh, even more clear and more focused on on you know what it is we we want to do. Um, let me also do another aside because again, I know I'm this big picture person. One of someday I would love to do, and maybe this is what we do in the 20th conference. I don't know. 
is to go back at all the conferences and pick and choose and pull some of the best of the best presenters. And of course, we've got evaluations that would tell us who that would be. Um, but I'll tell you, one of the people that presented, Liz, you'll appreciate this. Who? Awesome what's that? Gar. You Gar are such an idiot. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> For some of you that are unaware of Gar Shulin, he oh, climbed out from under a rock in Warrington, and he is um, rabid something other than what we are. He is just, you know, he's absolutely certain that Jefferson he's, could be special. Let's move on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that was very generous, Esther. Um, but no, I'm I'm thinking, uh, you all remember um, Doug Owsley. Now you talk about way going back and, you know, the forensic archeology span and stuff. Well, you know, but at some point in time, I would I would love to have us do a conference that's sort of the best of the best. So just set that aside. I, I didn't want to lose that, that that train of thought. But I do think maybe this conference can be, you know, kind of that quick, quick snapshot overview of from here to there and then set it up so that here's what's 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 coming down the pike. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And, and that quick overview then, the, then we, we uh, certainly focus with the, the reality of, of what this county was from the very beginning, um, which actually wasn't very pretty. It's, uh, it's been hidden for so long. I know. I think I, this is the time for the truth to come out and mm -hmm. what we know to be to be recorded because like Barbara was saying, it wasn't pretty. It, there was a lot that wasn't pretty and still isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but you had you had people that had to uh, pay to go to school somewhere and pretend they lived there in order to get there. They had to walk and they were spit upon by the white kids in the bus. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of things, yeah. but it shows what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're talking about um, some of those realities to Esther, I'm thinking of the different the, the, the different realities. And, and Barbara, the, you'll appreciate this. You know, the whole Germanic colony reality. And the, that, that, of course, that's not Fairfax County, but situations like that were not uncommon and we had people in the you know 18th century uh and and, and Esther, this is not to usurp what what i've just heard you say by any stretch but we had all these german people trying to come over here because of religious persecution and 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 that's you know very much of what our our, our country is about from, from the very beginning but but anyway, I'll, I'll I'll pull back for a minute. But that's what I'm thinking. I'm wondering if this first conference should be broad brush. Yes, absolutely, Esther. I'm a hundred percent with you. We we do not know all the stories, and and so let's drill down and, and begin at the beginning with with some of those, or one or two of them. I you know I don't know. And then use the next few conferences to really do the. Um, I'm, I'm thinking beyond reconstruction here. What happened in, in the county in terms of, you know, the economy, in terms of farming, in terms of when did the, that begin to change? Um, and, and make that be, you know, conference number two or conference number three of this whole series. Uh, I, I like the idea of a series, but I think most of us need to begin at the beginning. And that's what I'm hearing from Esther and, and, and Phyllis. Um, and yes, this, to this day, this, co this county is full of immigrants. My goodness. Um, we're back to where we were started to talk about the diversity. And the <laughs> diversity is important. So that's what I'm saying, Barbara. Let's let's bring up the topic of diversity, maybe have one or two quick um, cliff notes, if you will, about the diversity in the county, and then go ahead, 
that afternoon, late that morning, however it gets uh, stitched together to talk about the reconstruction time, talk about some of the stories that we don't really want to know about, but that certainly existed. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, I heard someone say break it down into sub themes like mm -hmm. what happened in transportation, what happened in you know the building of the the county and those kinds of things that that would be something to to get the diversity of these days yeah and um we that reminds me of the conference that we did where we talked host when we use the acronym for the word host homes and uh transportation was one of them Anyway, so there's yes. a, a little bit of a, a, a template of that from a few years ago. Um, what, if I, you, what if you approached the African American story from this goes back to the 1619 project and everything, but um, is some uh, mild posts of things that happen in the county from 18th century on and the importance of the african-american role in that whether it's the farming whether it's the building whether all of these different things um infrastructure the county so, infrastructure so, so all aspects of our culture or our society and if we pinpointed and pulled out like i said read something the other day one um the the reason that the founders were able to spend so much time thinking and doing all this is because they had they had the african americans doing their work for them Jefferson's looking at it looking at it um from a standpoint of these are the things that the county is known for or whatever maybe phyllis maybe the that wonderful woman that um does this that's always on the mount vernon facebook that does the stories of the of the um various um, enslaved people, maybe she could be a talk, you know, talk because we look at we look at Washington as this entrepreneur in many ways. Well, the reason he was was because of this so that we and that would be my original idea of trying to incorporate this the African American story into a larger story. What is how does anyone feel about that? Yeah, I, I, I like that, Barbara. And, and actually, so you could start you could do that for each one of these group if you take the model of uh, a whole conference devoted to one or more groups you could do you could start the african american group and what what was the examples of entrepreneurship of business examples of farming examples of religion even and you could carry it to all those communities really and um the asian community the, the religion the economic the um you know organizations devoted to um, care of, of culture and things like that could be a, a, a focus in on those on those various aspects in every one of these ethnic communities, this diversity that makes up Fairfax County. That I could see, yeah. So maybe what this, what this big picture is, uh, is three to four conferences of Fairfax County's diversity, series session one, series session two, series session three, and then split it up like that. Is that kind of what I'm hearing you all putting out there? I think, think that, yeah. And I'm still focusing on on the the first one or the whatever. Yeah. And I think that whatever groups I'm I'm think that we because of our initiative and that it's important that that the, one of the first, if not the first, one of the first groups has to be the African Americans and what they've accomplished in this county. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. That's always been. I I was never opposed to that. I was just trying to figure out how to incorporate it into a larger picture. Yeah. So I think the larger picture is going to be the diversity of Fairfax. I mean, we're one of the most diverse counties in the country. Absolutely. You know. Um, how, did anybody know off the top of their head how many languages are spoken in Fairfax County? Uh, I don't want to look it up. 
I know, I know the literacy council keeps that as a statistic. So, right. Okay. So that that'd be kind of fun to, to do some research. I know when Hillary went to Abington Elementary School, her very first year of kindergarten, the number of languages at that school. Now, this is a long time ago. This is thirty-five years ago. Were twenty-three. Yep. Lauren, Lauren, my daughter taught out in in Western Fairfax County. We call, I call it, you know, out at Hutchison, out in the on the frontier and she had out of her entire class there were six that were native english speakers so yes hey, Lynn, everyone yes yes mike you need to what now i need to i need to go sarah is telling me that it is her time now oh so okay i can imagine with that to make a mess in my house yeah okay i can imagine what that's all about all right so mike at least for the moment and then i can clarify and and circle back to you We've got so many ideas going here. I'm wondering if we need to just individually make a list of all the stuff we'd like to see four conferences cover with the theme of diversity and a beginning at the beginning. Because it's going to be all over the place. And then take that information. You know, if, if we had a longer window of time, we'd spend an afternoon together, we'd flip chart this and you know, do a, a we well, can do a Zoom, do screen shares, and things like that too. But um, I value. I need it. to go now. Bye. Bye, Bye Mike. Take right. care. Well, All right. Sounds like a good idea, Lynn. To get our thoughts in some kind of order. Right. We're all over the place. Yeah, we are. We are talking, but it's a good all over the place. Yeah. We're being creative. We're being creative. Yes, yeah, we are. we're very creative. <laughs> Which is I very like different than you two had to come up with. <laughs> I like the That's diversity of Fairfax County as an overall theme. Yeah. Okay. So here's a couple of. Thank you, Jordan. Um, I'm yeah, sorry. no, I, 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 I like that. I think diversity is. Definitely the way we look at this, we look at moving forward and then, and then it's, how do we, how do we project this? And right, I think so that, yeah. given what you say, not, I had not, I had forgotten or maybe never known that this year, the focus was going to be on African American history, culture, teaching that, and that's the case. And it's the logical place to begin. I don't know that I would go so far as to say, well, then we'll do something on the English and the German communities. I don't know about that. I think they're particularly assimilated at this point. I don't know that they have the same kind of we th when we think of diversity, certainly when I think of diversity as in, in my workplace, we're looking more at African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans. Right. Um, those are really what we're focusing on. You know, that and the whole Muslim reality. And there was a time, uh, Jordan, in our in, in, in the 20th century where you know it was quite a quite a big deal to have a, a, a Jewish family move in next yeah. week. Oh. Well, I was going to say the reason why Jews, there weren't very many Jews in Fairfax County is they really weren't. They weren't. Well, they weren't wanted. That's there right. Were restrictions yeah. all over the place. You couldn't buy in Fairfax County. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So they ended up in the bigger northern cities. Um, so let's kind of set that aside. I really appreciate this conversation. There's a lot of good energy around this tonight, guys. So I want to thank you for that. A couple of other things we do need to decide on is, um, or begin to chew on. I mean, we're we're still in January right now. Is do we plan for virtual again? Do we do it in 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 person? Um, I've tossed around information about Sherwood with uh, David yesterday. David Meyer, um, he's going to still try to get us a, a discount if we decided to do that. I don't know how much that discount would be. Uh, I've run into a snag where Shuva doesn't know what to do with our deposit anymore because it's too long for them to hang on to it and they have to give it back. Um, so, and I don't know what the answer to that's going to be. We'll have to work with Barbara Peters on that. Um, but we need to also be thinking, do we want to go back to do the one-on-one? -on -one? Do, or we want to do one on one slash live stream because channel 16's already come to me and said, listen, whatever you do, we're here to do live stream with you, just like we did. And this blew me away because Esther and I know what the setup was for that for that uh, last conference in the studio. They say it's easier for them to come to Sherwood and film than it is to do it at channel 16. And so we at least know 
that piece could be handled. But a lot of this is so incredibly COVID dependent. You know, it's, I think as we sit here in the end of January this year, it's really too soon to, to call here. And yet, I wonder if maybe we should go ahead and nail it down. If the, the two dates that would work for November that would fit in with our um, past practice is the 6th of November and the 13th of November. So either either one of those dates. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out. To if you. we say at this point virtual, because there's so many questions out there with the COVID. Yeah. Uh, and the lack of progress on really getting everybody vaccinated. If we say virtual, then uh, mm, that's a tough one. But but I would be willing to go with that because personally, and the audience that we usually have at these conferences mm -hmm. is the senior audience. Yeah, and I'd like I'd also like no, to think out of that going bit. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just for what it's worth, um, other organizations that I'm looking at that are planning conferences for 2021 yeah. are planning them virtually. Okay. Yeah. I think at this point in time, people are just proceeding with an abundance of caution. Yes. Yeah, and I, and and I think that makes perfect sense. And I think with, you know, to reiterate what Esther said, I think we do have, you know, a lot of people who might be in a vulnerable group who make up kind of our customary uh, attendees. Yes. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And I'll, I'll tell you, from a budgetary standpoint, I was going to pull up our 2019 budget, but I think, uh, in fact, I was just going to do a screen share. There's really, I think, in the moment, no real rush to take a look at that. Um, it was the least expensive conference we ever did. It was the most uh, intense from a labor perspective and a coordination perspective and a contributory perspective, but from a budgetary perspective, we didn't have to feed anybody. <laughs> so well, that saved us a lot of money right there. The, the plus there also is that you can, I mean, it's a, you know, there are so many pluses and minuses. The, the plus is you can get speakers that you might not ordinarily get because they wouldn't exactly have and it's a lot easier for them you could get more um you know higher level speakers or more um, um you know have more popular public speakers on the on the other hand i'd be interested to, to know how many people did we draw from out outside of fairfax county and if it was mostly a fairfax county audience um then you're really looking at um you know, then that might be militate towards doing it in person if by the fall uh, that would be possible. So there you know, are trade offs. Yeah. But yeah. you got to make reservations. Yeah. 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 Have to we'll talk about that. Um, and and I'll, I'll see what is even available at Sherwood or if Sherwood is even doing anything. I don't know. Maybe they're not yeah. open to the public right now. Um, but I, I, I do think back to, um, our audience that was I'm glad you brought that up Jordan because I would love to have thought that a lot of Fairfax County people took advantage of the conference last year and I know in fact many did the way the uh, channel 16 is set up we never really knew we I never really knew what our numbers were but I do know we hit a lot of folks nationally we had people in Texas and California and Florida and um I mean Esther you know just from the uh yes. delta sigma theta ladies that whoa you know you you, you got a lot of t and by the way thank you for that so you put the word out fantastically and so it it it, it showed in some of the interest and feedback but you know, I, I think it would a yeah. bigger audience and a more diversified audience yeah yeah to have but, you know and 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 that being the case just hang on to your hats, guys. Okay, just again, you know, I'm a big picture creative person. If we had a national audience for this, it wouldn't necessarily have to be just Fairfax County. It could be Fairfax County presents the diversity of America. 
No, that's you talk about like that's too big, Lynn. It is, it is with the it county is. first. It, yeah. it, it is, it is. But I, I just, I just wanted us to kind of push us up thinking outside the box just a little bit. So yes, I mean, I, I would think if we were looking at having somebody who was a more, you know, state or national like keynote speaker or something like that, that that could. You know, kind of set the the precedent or set the stage for something. But, um, I mean, I could I could give you a, a marvelous uh, list of people to choose from as far as speakers are concerned. I'd love to hear Joseph McGill from the Slave Dwelling Project, or right. uh, you know, there there's there are a number of people who are talking. You know, in a larger universe, but I think that if we if we have more than one person, you know, who has that kind of status, then we're moving away from the Fairfax County history. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I agree. I agree. And yeah, me... just in case you haven't been watching your chat boxes, Cheryl, bless her heart, did some research. There are 160 different languages spoken in Fairfax County public schools. Wow. Sure. The other thing I think if, if we could, um, Esther, were you the one who said that it's mostly a senior group? You know, I've been hoping that we could bring down the age of the group. Yeah, and I'd I like like us to to think about how we might do that because it it is a fact that history is the uh, most neglected subject in higher education. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that if we could um, make some kind of dent in that and increase an interest in and and um, knowledge about history, uh, we would be accomplishing something very important. I really do. With the younger the younger group. Yeah, yeah. And you know that what Mary did by bringing in West Springfield and uh, giving those scholarships out that was just a fantastic way to yeah. handle this. Okay, Barbara's trying. To well, I'm, I'm wanted to add on to that because Phyllis and Mary are starting the oral history interviews of various African Americans and. Again, with West Springfield, and so maybe mm -hmm. that could be. Um, I don't know how we could incorporate that, but that's those are true stories of an African American family, some of them which have long roots in the county. Um, so anyway, that's just an idea if we're if we're doing something like that, and that might bring more people in. Phyllis. Brian Heights um, is the AP history teacher at West Springfield that we've been right. working with. Right. And he's very interested in anything that he can do to, to help us. Um, yeah. He's these two young ladies that are going to be doing the interviews, uh, two African American young ladies, they're both seniors. They're going to be interviewing 10 students. I mean, 10 uh, adults, African American adults who grew up here in Fairfax County. Wonderful. And, and we've gotten two questions. Uh, Mary has five people that she selected, and I have five people that I selected. And both of the both of the men that we selected, each of them have asked the same question: Can I tell the truth? Can I tell about the discrimination that I experienced That's going to school here in Fairfax County? getting a nice. job and, and all of that. Um, so that's that's all going to be documented. And um, each interviewee will get a copy of the narrative and then um, the copy will be placed in the Virginia room. Wonderful. And, 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 and you know, it just, it breaks my heart, but I also appreciate the transparency of the questions they're asking. How can they tell the truth? So that could be a whole section is our <laughs> interviews. If those people are willing to have it shared at the conference right there. Yeah. And um, a lot of the history I've done in for Clifton this last year with the people that are descended from the original Harrison Beckwith families. Oh my gosh, I learned so much this year about the African American heritage and and and, and the travesty of it. Yep. The damn travesty of it. I mean, some of the things I learned, I was just sick to my stomach about. And and I'm not stupid. I know probably more than the average person, but oh, I heard some details that were just you know, it's 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 time for us to own what has been 
part of our past because if we don't take a look at it, we're just going to repeat it. Well, and you know what? If we tell that part, then we tie in and tell the part of all their of of the entrepreneurs and the things that Esther was talking about. So we we share that part, and then we share in spite of this is what the African Americans accomplished. So and you have your what, you have your balance then. And you know what, Barbara? That theme in spite of, in spite of, right? I think that can be a ribbon that runs through these whole three or four years, in spite of. In spite of what you heard this morning, here's what got done, and we're going to talk about it this afternoon. I mean, or however it gets chopped. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I do think we need to put a voice to 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 where we've been. And of course, that's American history. That's in spite yeah. of for the Germans, in spite of for the Jewish, in spite of for everybody. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's. I understand my, my ignorance, but would would women come under the diversity? Absolutely. So shouldn't there be a section on women and how women were treated in Fairfax County and what it was like? Um, you know, I mean, we've got our we've got actually history at the uh, with the workhouse. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I do think, Jordan, that's a viable topic because it was just put on the table last year. I uh -huh. think it would be repetitive to do it again this year. But I think down right. the line, I mean, if we're going to do four conferences snippets of it. Precisely, precisely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got, we, we don't need to really talk about budget. I'm going to go ahead and see what I can get at Sherwood. I'll do some research on that. We're going to continue to chew on this, this topic of diversity and how we're going to, you know, what kind of bite sizes we're going to put to it. So as you all are, are making your list of what we really like to see at the conference. And I really hope everybody participates in, in getting me something. Also be thinking about folks, um, Liz, you, you have connections to people that are just magnificent presenters. Be thinking about other people you have heard present that you think would be uh, appropriate for inclusion in this broad brush of diversity in Fairfax County. I think this is an ambitious project, but I think it's awesome. And I think uh, the windows through which we take a look at Fairfax County will be similar windows to the windows of the rest of this country. And 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 so I really see us kind of putting something out there that's kind of a, a flagship and, you know, the rest of the, the, the country can learn from. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, but one of the reasons I do this and like to learn and, and share and, and educate is so we can all better know each other and you know, live in a, in a more peaceful kind of accepting way. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be one of my personal. So the recent history doesn't repeat itself. Precisely. Yes. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. And you know, it may be by the time we do the four, the the let's say we do four conferences. By the time we get to the twentieth conference, because don't forget, twenty twenty one will have already been four years behind us. Maybe we go back and look at how the hell did 2021 happen and how are we going to make sure it doesn't happen again? Oh, I mean, I, that, not 2021. Or 2020, excuse me. 2020. <laughs> well, you know, actually, we had that January 6th thing going on. So in my head, that's 2020. So, so anyway. All right. Hey, so what, what, I'm really what, excited what? hearing all of your comments. Yeah. I get a little bit uh worked up when i speak and i'm passionate of course I'm like phyllis who stays calm <laughs> well, i would love you esther esther i i was just sitting here thinking on saturday um the alexandria black history museum debuted a film uh, the filmmaker is an African-American young man in the city of Alexandria. And, and it's the film is actually streaming on Amazon Prime. And it's called The American L-O-W-S. And that's that's the legacy of white supremacy. Wow. They start, wow. They start with they start with the 1619 when we came to America and show everything that takes place. It has, it features Joe Madison, uh, Michael Eric Dyson, 
um, two other two two other professors. There there are a lot of famous people that you've seen that are part it's of that. Movie. You better check that out. Yeah, if it, Phyllis, is this a movie movie, and it's going to be shown this week? It's it's a it's about an hour and a half film. Um, Can you get us a link I'll, for it? I'm actually considering buying it myself. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, but it is it is streaming on Amazon Prime uh, for Black History Month. It's That's it started family. streaming this week. Um, share that with did, the rest of us that would be great yes uh your group did a marvelous job i really oh. enjoyed the presentations because that brought us up to date on what's happening in our school but what and what's really happening is that fairfax county is not a part of those 16 right. districts i got it and, and they've got that what the course is an elective it's not blended into Mm -hmm. U.S. history, so right. there's still a maybe fight the, to. Maybe the history commission, as part of our initiative, could sort of send a little note to the Fairfax County Board of Education, suggesting it. I mean, what would? Why couldn't well, we? Do that? No, there, there's one school in Fairfax County that's actually doing the pilot, and that's Madison, Indiana. Mm -hmm. It's, Ma it's Madison High School, I think, in Vienna. What I'm hearing is that Fairfax County wants to do its own oh, no. curriculum project, so they may be working on it this summer. Oh, no. <laughs> they need help. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, there's a three-page article about the, the class, which, which is more of to me, it's it's more of them learning about uh, equal justice and, and writing a paper and that kind of thing. But I'll forward it to so, you. So it doesn't get to the real no. nitty gritty. No. Okay. What what you heard on Friday, uh -huh. that, those recommendations, when they will be finalized and, and made into curriculum, will take it all the way through and be a part of the U.S. history class. Well, the thing I like about about it is that, that the teachers, in order to receive a renewal of their license and their certification, mm -hmm. have to take um, the, the courses that yes. are being recommended. Oh, so. wonderful. Yes. yes, it's required. Is it is the recording up yet? I was going to send it to my daughter. We thought it was it was posted on uh, Virginia Humanities website, but it's actually on Virginia Humanities um, Facebook page. Oh, poo. Okay. Um, but I I think I have have downloaded a portion of it on the, at least the, the oral presentation part. I don't think I have the questions, but I think I have the, oh, the, the presentation the, part. With the I thought questions. maybe Virginia Africana would have it because if you just have the PowerPoint with the slides, it gives you the information. I think I can get you that. Would you? That's good. Okay. Because it, it actually, it, Virginia Humanities was actually the one that was recording it. Okay. And 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 they sent us a link to oh good, the but I'll send it to you. It's worth it's worth the commission knowing about it. I thought it was excellent. Is Jordan yes. still with us? Yes, he is. Oh, Jordan, I wanted since since um, this is Holocaust Remembrance Day, and I think it was in 2019 that you all had us down to your museum, and we had the incredible tour. Yes, yeah. posted and that on we Facebook. Were there, we were there at the special ceremony, and and yep. so yep. I was thinking of that today. And thank you again. Yep. That was a very oh. powerful, powerful day. Very touching. Very yep. very touching. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Barbara. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I put our little picture on Facebook a few days ago of that somebody took of us. Do you remember down in the yes kind of lobby, lobby area? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we've got a lot of individual reflecting to do, I think, here. Um, the last item I was going to try to touch on is marketing, but I think as some of the rest of this comes together, that marketing piece is, is going to kind of flow out. Um, no, I have yeah. that uh, Cheryl put something in the chat for us. Yeah. So, yes. Lowe's. That was 160 That's languages. It. it was the 160 languages article. 
No, no. She, uh, she put no, something in another one. Or did she do more than that? I'm sorry. I have the link to the movie that Phyllis just mentioned. Oh, wonderful. Yes, Cheryl. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl, Great. Cheryl, you you can be a drop in anytime. <laughs> we we really like that. We'll put, make you our official drop in, maybe. All right, guys, let's look at the calendar for February 24th. And in the meantime, I, I'll try to get a minute summary out to you. You probably won't get it till this weekend. I've I've actually been very sick. I've had uh, hip bursitis really, really bad. I've been doing physical therapy right now, and steroid treatment and all kinds of stuff. And, I shared this with one of my girlfriends and I said, I thought only old ladies got bursitis. And she looked at me and she said, you are an old lady. Anyway. So. No, you're, I, not. you're not, Lynn. Well, no, thank you. Thank you, Jordan. You're not <laughs> something I would say to you. That's fake news. Fake news. That's, fake news. <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. We, so, you know, what do you we, think about the 24th? Are you okay with that? February 24th, that Wednesday? Yeah. Everybody good on that? Okay, and Barbara was trying to say something. I was just going to say that, you know, we are who we are inside. It's it's this vessel that we live in that may get older, but we are not old. That's right. yeah. Mom, yeah. I still yeah. thinks like I'm 32, and that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're a grandmother, Lynn. Now you're uh, a grandmother. Really. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I'll, I'll, when I send this minute summary, I'll show you the most recent picture of Pee Wee. Oh my God, he looks like Popeye. He is hilarious. He's got a smile on his face. He's red haired. This little guy is going to be a character. There's no, no doubt about that. He's going to be a little something. I talked to Hillary at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay. Summary, summary sentence. Mommy. He sleeps. He eats. I change diapers and I'm tired. <laughs> Welcome to the world. Yes. Really? Uh, yes. Do say hello to her. I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just really proud of her. She's taken to mo to mommyhood beautifully. Yeah. Also, a little piece of trivia. Hillary knows Amanda Gorman. Oh. Yes. Wow. She knows Amanda Gorman, and oh. this is the deal. Um. Actually, this ties in beautifully with African American. Uh, realities in our country even today. There's a group nonprofit. Uh, um, oh, what's her name? Um, uh, Susan Hellman is very familiar with it. Called 826. It's a group that's devoted to teaching literacy to inner city children. Hillary was president of the chapter in Chicago. And at that time, I believe there was a youth person on the national 826 chapter who was Amanda Gorman. Wow. So she's known of her for quite some time. Wow. Yeah, she's oh. quite a little fire firecracker, as you have seen. Yes. So anyway. All right. Well, thank you guys for your energy tonight. One of the things I love about you is we get ideas out. We're respectful. We're kind. We're thoughtful. We're inclusive. And um, I just wish the rest of the world could be a little bit more like this. <laughs> we're creative. And we're creative. Right. We are. We are. We are. We'll, we'll set the <laughs> example. Right. That's the example, and we will bring Mary back to give this conference a title. <laughs> she could be a guest. <laughs> Drop in, just like Cheryl. So anyway, okay. Anybody else have anything for right now? I think it's probably a good time to sign off. Good night, guys. Good night. All right. Good night. Stay, good night. stay healthy. We'll see you all next week. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I'll look forward to hearing back from you guys. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to sign off last. So. <laughs>